Hello and welcome to Banfield. It has been 16 and a half years since Hurricane Katrina brought disaster, almost a death blow, to parts of New Orleans. But Katrina didn't do this. This came along after some of the ramshackle, mold-infested health hazards that you're looking at right now. These are less than a decade old. They're supposed to be the solution, the anti-Katrina affordable, attractive, eco-friendly homesteads in the wasteland that had been the Lower Ninth Ward. Brad Pitt even said so. In 2006, the Hollywood A-lister and part-time New Orleans resident unveiled a building plan whose name now reeks of irony. Make it right. World-class architects would build 150 world-class houses for sale to lower Ninth Ward residents. That was a requirement. Uh, at far below cost, about $150,000 each. Brad Pitt himself kicked in $5 million of his own money, and he raised millions more. Ever the showman, in 2007, he had 150 bright pink tents erected on the building site. And he even hired the lighting director from the Louvre Muse Museum in Paris to make sure that they stood out at night. From 2008 to 2015, Make It Right built 109 houses, not 150, at a cost of almost $27 million. But even before the last one was finished, issues started popping up in the other ones. It seems that some of the world-class architects didn't take into account New Orleans' tropical climate. More irony, uh, given why they were hired in the first place. Some houses didn't have waterproof paint or rain gutters. Some had flat roofs and were so tightly insulated that once the moisture got in, it wasn't getting out. And the result was rot and termites and black toxic mold, which is blamed for making many residents sick and also for killing this woman. Her name is Trudy Green. A geographer who you're gonna meet in a moment found that 60% of the make it right houses have fundamental structural problems. Two have already been demoed, demolished completely. And at least a half dozen of them are just abandoned outright. Only six of the 109 homes are in reasonably good shape. And make it right itself it's kind of like it never existed, except as a name on lawsuits, mostly as a defendant, alongside other names, including Brad Pitt. But it's also a plaintiff because Make It Right is suing its own head architect and executive director. As for Brad, Brad Pitt, though, uh, he doesn't live in New Orleans anymore, and he hasn't mentioned Make It Right in public since 2016, but his publicist gave News Nation this statement, and let me read directly from it. Brad was involved at the beginning to help the people of the Lower Ninth Ward, and obviously it is upsetting to see what happened after he had stepped back from the project and others took over. His attorneys have made it clear that he has no legal liability for the decisions made by others, but Brad remains personally committed to doing whatever he can to helping resolve the ongoing litigation. It was always something that was important to him from the beginning, and he very much wants to help facilitate this getting to a much more positive end. I'm joined now by a man who can't wait to get Brad Pitt on a witness stand. Ron Austin filed a class action lawsuit on behalf of the Make It Right homeowners. And as promised, we're also joined by Judith Keller. She's an urban geographer at the University of Illinois. And she was the one who studied these homes extensively and found all of those statistics. Welcome to both of you. Okay, so first and foremost, Ron, uh, tell me a little bit about your, your clients. Um, who are they? And how are they coming to terms with the asset that they bought and are stuck with? You mean the, li the liability that they acquired? These are residents of the city of New Orleans, salt of the earth people who work very hard for everything they've gotten. They believed in Brad Pitt, they believed in the dream he sold them, and they wanted very much to be a homeowner 
and to participate in the rebuilding of the neighborhood. Unfortunately, what they've gotten is a bunch of broken promises, rotten houses, left with huge mortgages that honestly they cannot afford to keep continue paying, uh, and living in houses that are essentially rotten and should be torn down to the ground and started over. And of course, because Brad Pitt's name is tied to it, it makes big headlines, you know, Ron. But I'm curious about how the people who are stuck with the, I mean, literally junk that we're seeing on camera right now, these things are just abysmal. How do they feel about Brad himself, given that, I mean, he was one of the people who came and said, I'm here to help and doled out millions and millions of his own money. Do they, do they harbor anger against him personally, or do they think it's more the people who took over after Brad left? Listen, I think it's, it's two camps. I think there are people who, Brad is a charismatic guy. And for the people that he in fact met, and he in fact filed, signed an MOU, a memorandum of, of understanding with the community, where he made promises that he would build these affordable, environmentally friendly, sustainable homes. Those people want to continue believing in Brad. Unfortunately, the reality is set in and they now see him for what they believe he is. A smile, Even though, I mean, again, you know, guy. he did give all that, all that money. I keep coming back to that because I, I see both sides of this um, very tragic story. And just one other um, follow-up to that, Ron, and that is the, um, the, what do they do? I mean, what, where have these people been left? Because as I understand it, the Make It Right offices no longer have phones. Uh, the website comes up uh, gone. Uh, the staff has all left and people witnessed uh, furniture being moved into storage. So it's almost as though there isn't even an entity to complain to anymore to say, look, I'm, I'm literally dying in, in my house and, and I need you to fix what you, what you, you know, messed up. Where are they turning to, these people? You know, unfortunately, there's nowhere to turn. Brad Pitt and the foundation have closed their offices, shut their websites down, and it's li literally their containers sitting on an empty lot. And at one point, those containers were wide open. And so there's nowhere really to turn. We are fighting every day in court, attempting to get the foundation and officers and directors to come into court here in New Orleans and answer answer some questions as it relates to what went wrong and how are they planning on making it right. Okay, so Judith, I want you to jump in here too. I read your um, entire report and I've got to be honest, I, I ran out of highlighter because I was so amazed with every one of these sort of factoids that you personally witnessed when you sort of, you know, you came, to, you know, as a case study to, to look at these, these homes. What stood out the most to you? I think as uh, Ron already mentioned, you know, what stands out here is that those homes were not rented, but people invested in those homes. They invested in the dream that Brad Pitt had, and they, um, you know, have those loans and mortgages now hanging over their head while their homes are collapsing. And when I first visited, one of the homes was, um, you know, it had a flat roof and the roof was basically coming in and the home has been demolished in the meantime. So really seeing homes like that with like massive um, mold infestation, termite infestation, um, structures that are just collapsing, like front porches falling off um, and things like that. It's like, I, I don't think it's just like one thing that I can mention. Um, and the other thing, you know, when you study housing uh, and then you see models uh, that were designed to look great but just don't work in the subtropical climate of New Orleans, you can just really just shake your head and wonder uh, who came up with that. Yeah, I mean, I was, I was, I had to read it twice when I saw no rain gutters and flat roofs. So Ron, that also makes me think, I've been through the housing process a few times and there is always something called the inspection and that's government you know that's regulated so is there another entity that needs to um cough up here for having i'm presumably done inspections that were god awful there the city should have performed inspections in most instances i believe they did perform inspections i believe that they had some sort of a deal worked out with the foundation 
but I don't necessarily want to cast blame or lose sight of what's important. Remember, Ashley, they raised $50 million to build these homes. And so irrespective of whether or not something was done wrong, it was $50 million. There should be plenty enough money to come back and make it right. So I don't want to lose sight and, you know, cast doubt somewhere else or, or put some blame somewhere else. What we have here is an epic failure of a development by, by some well-known people who raised $50 million on the back of some very hardworking citizens, and they deserve to have their homes properly built. It's no reason in the world I should be on this TV with you tonight in this interview when they raised $50 million, built 106 homes, 109 homes, and just about every one of them need to be torn down and started over. That's a travesty, so, and that needs to be listen, fixed. Listen, I, I, you sound like a very nice lawyer, um, but I do think that, you know, as lawyers uh, apply their trade, they also have to look where the deep pockets are, and a lot of times government uh, has the deepest uh, of them all. So that's why I kind of ask you if you're not... Uh, pointing the finger at the people who could have prevented this from the get-go. The, the inspectors could have said, hold this development. These things are going to kill people. Like, that's literally what's being alleged here, is that one of these residents died because of the mold. So I just wonder if, if the taxpayers um, of Louisiana might not be on the hook, as well as perhaps the vestiges of Make It Right and maybe Brad Pitt. Look, maybe that's a day for the judge or jury. I believe, I firmly believe the foundation and officers and directors are solely and squarely responsible for these ill-built homes. Um, while the inspectors can, could have done one or two things, these homes from jump were just poorly built. They had evidence that these homes were po poorly built as far back as 2010, 2011, and 2012. They chose not to properly fix these homes and kept on building and kept on building and, then, and kept Ron, on it, building and selling these old streams. In some of the, um, uh, the documents, is it true that some of these homeowners were asked to sign non-disclosure agreements if they wanted repairs done, meaning I'm not going to fix what you know, is broken in your house until you promise never to say peeps about what's going on here. Is that really true? Absolutely. And unfortunately, some of the people to this day are still afraid to speak because they were forced to and or coerced to sign NDAs in an attempt to get their homes fixed. They were taken advantage of. That's crazy. Yeah, I mean, a lot of these it's, people it's were beyond. already struggling it's, it's with sad, so many actually. things, right? Victimized by Katrina, uh, lost everything. Okay, so Judith, I, I understand Louisiana to have this, you know, lemon law. Basically, if you if you buy a, a new home, um, you should have some recourse if it's a lemon. How is it that the lemon law isn't coming in to protect these people right off the jump? Why do they have to sue? Well, I guess because here we have a nonprofit housing developer. This is not a, you know, public housing project or something, but it was the nonprofit, and so the state of Louisiana or the city was not directly responsible. And um, while I see that there's some fault also with the city because um, the people who were supposed to keep those homes safe and expect them uh, did not, um, I think I, I agree with Ron that we have to look at what make it right did and didn't do and the whole thing is just so incredibly sad i guess the last question i have judith is like what what does that say about private nonprofits who want to come in after disaster and and help i mean i don't think anybody had a a mean bone in their body here um there were desperate people who in desperate times needed desperate help and along came this project badly done yes perhaps but the intention in the future does that mean People should hold off and governments should hold off allowing these kinds of nonprofit groups from getting involved in, in an urban renewal? Well, I think uh, the case of Make It Right is very distinct. And so I would be very careful to just generalize what was happening in the Lower Ninth Ward in New Orleans to other nonprofit housing developments. Um, and on the other hand, I agree with you that there are some lessons that can be learned. And one of them is that, you know, I believe that housing is a human right and that um, 
we have a responsibility to provide access to adequate and affordable housing and it cannot just be non-profit housing developers that take care of that, but there's also a responsibility mm -hmm. of local governments and uh, the local state to step in and provide housing where there's a need for housing. And mm -hmm. then also, um, that's another point I think that we can take away here, is that we have to look at the intersection of health and housing. As you pointed out, people are getting sick um, from living in those homes. There's like one woman who has sadly passed away and so you know looking at that intersection what we can do to build healthy homes and healthy communities and ensure that people can live happy lives and um, yeah. you know are physically and mentally healthy um, and I think that's another well, takeaway take from task, Make It Right. Uh, yeah take, take to task those who do something that uh, takes away from all of that. Ron Austin and Judith Keller thank you for being on tonight Ashley. I wish you both the best and yeah go ahead quickly Ron. Ashley. No, what I want to say is this. There were a number of developers who did come into the city of New Orleans post-Katrina and did build very successful communities. They just didn't have the star power behind them. And so I don't want to, right. get, want it, want it to get mixed up that, you know, developers coming into it, lend a helping hand after a catastrophe come in, they're subject to be criticized. There were a number of projects properly done by very good builders and very good developers. Something went very wrong here and a need to make it right. Well, keep us posted on the litigation and uh, what happens with all those people because that is definitely a travesty. Thank you both, appreciate it. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.